So growing up, uh, me and my brother, we had, you know, your sort of typical like, elder brother, younger sibling relationship. Um, my mum and dad used to make sure he came everywhere with me. He uh, were always sort of a bit smaller than everyone else, so I always sort of had that protector role with him. And I mean, at times it was quite annoying, but you know, having to take this little lad around with me, but playing sport, football, rugby together, arguing over who'd be on the computer, things like that. Um, and a lot of real fond memories growing up, you know, in, in that sort of era and in a really loving household as well. So he left school and sort of bounced around a couple of jobs. Um, he was quite a character and had um, probably a, a little bit of trouble with authority. Um, even sort of going through school with teachers and things like that. Um, fell out with a couple of bosses in a couple of jobs when he first left school. And then he one day he just came home when he was sort of 18, 19 and, and told my mum that he was going to go in army. And I think everyone was sort of taken back by it really, um, didn't really think that he'd, he'd go through with it and um, he joined the rifles and pretty much went straight off to Catrick um, for his training camp and um, then went on sort of a couple of tours to both Iraq and Afghanistan. It was very difficult um, when he was in the army. Um, he was based in Paderborn for a lot of it, so um, we wouldn't really see him too much, but we'd hear, it, hear from him quite regular. But then obviously when he goes to Iraq and Afghanistan, you kind of, you always fear the worst really, and a lot of them were sort of kids. You know, you seem to think you've got a good idea of the things that are going on over there from the news and stuff like that, but when you hear it first hand and it's a loved one that's over there, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a difficult time to sort of cope with. He suffered with PTSD um, to a point where he ended up sort of in um, sort of rehab for a couple of weeks uh, with a charity called Combat Stress and that seemed to really help him. Um, his trauma was something that he really struggled talking about. Me and my brother shared everything. If ever he were in trouble or if he had a sort of breakdown, I'd kind of be the one that he'd ring, it, you know, whether it be two, five in the morning, and I'd always go and sort of be able to get through to him, but he could never really talk about the trauma. And um, when he came out of combat stress, he still couldn't really deal with it and talk about it too much. Um, and he came to live at my house for a bit. I mean, one of the sad things probably is, once he did pass my brother, he'd, I sort of checked his things and he'd left a letter, not for me directly, but, just to talk about his trauma and I think it really summed him up really, um, the kind of guy that he was. So his trauma was actually, um, he tried to save a young girl who'd been hit by an IED um, and that's the trauma that he had and you know, to look back now the relationship that he had with me, nieces and my little girl as well. I just, you know, it just goes to show even more how brave he was um, to be able to sort of put that to the back of his mind and have a relationship with, with our children as well after trying to do that. I was very proud of him. Um, I was really proud of everything they did. He was my little brother um, and I love him to bits and I'm really thankful that I grew up in a household where, you know, it were okay to tell each other you loved each other and we were always taught and always are taught to express your feelings to one another and um, I told him I loved him every time I saw him. Um, I look back at texts all the time now. There's texts from me to him, him to me, you know, how proud you are, how proud I am of him for dealing with the things that he's dealt with. Um, and that's probably, you know, the even sadder thing about it. It sort of really got his life on track. He just bought his first house, just got engaged. It was his, his engagement party when he actually got hit on the night. Um, and it just seemed like everything was, you know, for the first time was sort of falling into place for him. Um, which, you know, makes it all a bit more tragic as well. To, to go back to play in and um, training initially, um, I was probably going to stay at home to be honest, but we had a really good team around um, around the family from the police liaison unit and they sort of said, you know, it might be good for you to go back um, and I spoke to James James Ford at York who I've always had a good relationship with, I played with him at Featherstone and I, I said, look, I think I'm going to come back training and he said, yeah, if you want to do it, come back, be around the boys. And he said, look, if you just want to come and train, you can train. And I just I said, look, I'm not coming just to train. <laughs> I don't want to do that. If I'm coming, I want you know, to be able to play. And just to get back to rugby, it's, it's something that I've probably always used and has helped me cope with difficult sort of issues. And 
even if you're just having a bad day, you know, to be able to play rugby, it's a great release and it really did help me sort of just escape, even if it was just for an hour or two hours a day, really. I mean, I'm, I'm extremely proud of all my family. Um, my mum and dad have been the strongest people that, that I know, and they've lost a son, and I can't imagine, you know, how that would feel to lose one of my children. Um, my wife's been an absolute rock. She was there on the evening, so she was with my brother after he'd been hit, and for her to stay there with him at that time, it's, it's just such a brave act, and I look at her every day and I have so much respect for her, what she's gone through, but not only having to deal with that, but the way she's looked after me. She gave birth to our second daughter five days after her, my brother died. All her thoughts were on me and, and my family. She didn't once sort of complain about any sort of, you know, pregnancy pains or anything like that. Um, she just dealt with it like an absolute warrior. And, you know, for that, I, I love my wife to bits anyway, but for that, you know, she, she just got so much respect from me. Having two daughters um, makes me carry on, really. Um, I'll sometimes find myself in the kitchen, a uh, song will come on or I'll see a photo and, you know, I'll have a bit of a breakdown, a bit of a cry, and then my eldest daughter will come in and I've got to be strong for them. Um, whilst I want them to understand, you know, what sadness is and what grief is, at the same time, I want them to have a really good upbringing and a happy upbringing. And, one thing that my brother brought to everybody's life was laughter. And uh, the last thing that I want to do is be sad all the time thinking about that. Um, it's difficult, people say to think about the good times and when you've gone through a tragedy like this, it is difficult to think of the good times, but I'm getting to a point now where I can do that more. I've really found a, a value for, for life and living life as it is and that's because of what what's happened you know over the last 12 months it's just finding ways to cope and you know ways to think about him in a positive way